In 1978, three Americans submerged into an off-limits cave off the coast of Athens, Greece. This cave network was notorious for being an underwater maze with intense currents. The dive was supposed to be only a few hours, but the three men just disappeared. For 30 years, nobody knew what happened to them. But during a search for another lost diver, the secrets of their 1978 expedition would begin to come to light. This is their story. Greece, a country known for its mysteries, is home to over 10,000 caves. One of these is the Vuliagmeni Lake, a dangerous and extensive network of underwater caves. The lake's unpredictable currents make it a challenging place to explore, even for experienced divers. The lake is located 15 miles south of Athens and was formed about 2,000 years ago due to an earthquake that caused a large cavern to collapse. The collapsed cavern's outline can still be seen from a distance. The lake has unique environmental conditions. It is supplied with warm seawater, around 28 to 35 degrees Celsius, through an underwater channel that spreads through a network of flooded caves. As a result, the lake's temperature never drops below 18 degrees Celsius. The underwater cave continues deep inside the mountain and has never been fully explored. It's so vast that it's impossible to trace its end, even with sonar detection. The submerged cavern is located near the lake's edge and has 14 tunnels. One of these tunnels is 800 meters long and 60 to 150 meters wide, making it one of the world's longest. Many underwater expeditions have been carried out to map the cave, and a few amateur divers have drowned trying. The first to venture into its depths were the Germans back in the 1940s. Their initial findings sparked the curiosity of many divers from around the world. Years later, a tragic incident occurred. Two divers, while exploring the cave, lost their lives just a few meters from the surface. Their bodies were never recovered. This unfortunate event caught the attention of Jean-Jacques Bolland a famous Swiss diver and a president of the International Association of Cave Divers. In 1988, Bolins went on a mission to explore the cave. This project was supported by the Ministry of Culture and financed by the municipality of Vuliagmeni. On his first dive, Bolins made a remarkable discovery. He found a narrow passage at a depth of 30 meters, leading to a massive underwater room. Bolins believed that the two divers lost their lives due to the strong currents inside the cave and their lack of knowledge about the the cave's geography and morphology. Sadly, they were not the only ones. Six more explorers met the same fate, mainly due to inadequate equipment and unfamiliarity with the cave's underwater environment. In 1995, a ministry decision led to the closure of the cave to the public after countless deaths had occurred within its depths. Since then, only scientific diving has been allowed. Nowadays, the cave with its warm water and high hydrogen sulfide content serves as a spa. Greek doctors even recommend spending time there for various ailments. Donald Mitchard, a 32-year-old Air Force sergeant born on August 8, 1946, was stationed at Helenicon, the U.S. Air Force support base at the Athens airport in Greece. He joined the Air Force right after graduating from Bideford High School 12 years prior. Meanwhile, the Granroth siblings, Jan and Mark, hailed from Sacramento. Jan, an outgoing and athletic 20-year-old, had graduated from Encina High School and chose the military to guide her life. Her leadership skills were evident when she served as her platoon leader during basic training. Mark, age 21, was part of the family's paint contracting business and was a keen athlete who enjoyed cycling in Hawaii and backpacking. Both Donald and Jan were stationed at the Helenikan base near Athens. Mark, planned a summer trip to Europe to connect with Jan before backpacking and diving across the country. Both of them, being skilled divers, were excited at the many opportunities they would have over the next few months. On September 9, 1978, Mark and Jan, accompanied by the more experienced diver Donald, arrived at Lake Foglamilli. They intended to complete a recreation dive of the intense cave network below the waters. Cave diving in 1978 was still in its infancy and was even more dangerous without proper training. Yet these were supposed to be skilled divers who knew what they were doing, but the trio would fail to fully prepare for the dive. They would make three crucial errors. Number one, they didn't bring extra lights. For obvious reasons, this left the window open for something to go wrong. Number two, they didn't bring spare tanks. Again, this one is pretty self-explanatory. If you don't have air to breathe, well, 
you just won't last long. And finally, number three, they failed to establish a guideline. Mistakes one and two are egregious today, but the third mistake set all three divers up for failure. What made this cave so dangerous was the intense network of tunnels, length, and depth as mentioned earlier. Their dive was set up for failure from the beginning, and while exploring the undersea caves, the trio would vanish. Their disappearance led to an accident analysis that shaped the current rules and training for cave divers today. Antoine Oncolek, a seasoned Swiss caver, found himself trapped in the labyrinth. He was on an expedition tracing the path of the American divers who had disappeared years ago. Suddenly, he was hit by nitrogen narcosis. He felt as if he was bound by unseen ropes trapped in a crystal clear space. He realized why the American divers never made it out. The deep narcosis and the vast tunnels disoriented him, making him lose his sense of depth and distance. He felt dizzy, but thanks to his experience in the sight of another diver, he managed to escape the underground cave. The Greek authorities tried to find another entrance to the cave by using dyes in the water, but their efforts were in vain. A week later, they had to call off the search when a diver nearly drowned after the current ripped off his face mask. With the official search abandoned, Fran Granroth, the mother of the missing divers Mark and Jan, took it upon herself to find her sons. She wrote letters to every president who moved into the White House, starting with Jimmy Carter. She couldn't believe her sons were cave diving without light, as they were experienced divers who just didn't make these mistakes. She feared that political unrest would have put her sons in danger. Two weeks after the divers' disappearance, the Greek authorities issued a presumptuous finding of death. Arnold Granroth, a cousin of Jan and Mark, revealed that their father, Russell, had made two trips to Greece to find out what happened to his sons. Sadly, Russell passed away in 1992, never knowing the fate of Mark and Jan. Almost three decades later, a group of divers would enter the cave, looking for the remains of a Greek photographer who had entered the caves in 1990 to find the missing Americans. That group of divers would come across two unidentified bodies. After extraction, they would eventually be released by Greek authorities on February 14, 2007, and sent to the U.S. military officials for DNA testing. It was not until June 19 that Fran Granroth received a call confirming that the remains were those of her children. A mother's heart ached as she received her children's remains. Each Christmas, she had hoped that they were still alive, but now she knew that they were gone. She didn't believe the funeral would bring closure. Death, especially of the young, leaves a void that lasts forever. Their brother Jim, a painter in Sacramento, also mourned their loss. He was just 16 when his siblings vanished. The funerals for Mark and Jan were set for August 4th, 2007, in Sabika, Minnesota. Donald was buried in Bidford, Maine, leaving behind his wife, Rosemary, and their three children. Donald, Jan, and Mark's dive is historic for all the wrong reasons, but so much has been learned from their story. Rules have been enforced to this day to ensure that what happened in that cave never happens again. Or at least, we can try. <laughs>